How's it going everybody? Welcome to the channel. This is Big Day Dave and this is a map tour for a new mod map to Farming Simulator 22 called Alpen Hill. And we're going to start with the description from the mod hub and it reads, Hello and welcome to the Corinthian Alps. I hope you have fun. Welcome to the Alpen Hill map. The map is from my home country, Austria, Corinthia. On the map you will find 85 fields, meadows, and forest areas ranging in sizes from large to small, divided sec or divide sections. You will find a picturesque village in the mountains where agriculture is still practiced. A biogas plant in supermarket agricultural trade, fish farm, and sawmill were built as productions and sale points and much more. As a player you receive a starting farm with two fields and various vehicles and machines. The stables for horses, cows, pigs, and chickens are also on the farm. The stable for the sheep and cow pasture are located just outside. You can get water from the lake and rivers. Clover was, at, uh, clover was used as an additional fruit. Hoff 2 and 3, as well as bioheating plant, must be purchased through the farmland. The fire station must also be purchased through the farmland. However, the farmland is free. Lear. There are mods required for this map, map, actually several of them, quite a few. Let's start off with the Decorative Details Pack by Triangle Troubles, Triangles Trouble, Bavarian Farm Pack by Bernie CS, Sawmill Pack by Ola Hondor, Ola Holdor, Biomass Plant, uh, Biomass Power Plant by Vertex Designs, Homestead Pig Barn by Pazer Modding, German Fire Station by Anarax Eki, Self-marketing by Farmer Five Tom, Tellurian Dairy by Toro. Ooh, I don't know how to pronounce it. T I R O L E R H E I M A D H Modding. Whoo! Bavarian House by Lucas G, Landsberg Farm by Bernie C S, Restaurant by Omatana, Pellet Productions by F S P T, Lower Bavarian Farm Pack by Bernie C S. Lime Fertilizer Salt Herbicide Seed Production by BDBSSB, Garden Plot by DS Power, and Firewood Production by Agrogati. This map was created by Black Pat Modding and is 390.61 megabytes to download. And if we take a look at the map, this is what it looks like. We start out here in the southern portion of the map. We start out by owning farmlands number 2, 5, and 92. 2 and 5 being uh, being separate fields and they do not have product associated to them. And 92 being your starting farm. Field prices do vary, but you do get a very good range because of the different sizes of fields. So if we start up here, we have farmland 16. It's $7,500, 11000 17900 So you get these really nice, small, cheap plots of land that you can buy. It should be relatively easy to get that kind of money. And then it just kind of grows from there. But the largest field on this map is 62, and it costs $244,000. So it's not going to break the bank to be able to get up to this. You're going to be able to very quickly buy your way up to it. You have a couple of forestry areas down here in the southwest, uh, 237,000, 203,000, and 105. There is the ability to buy the entirety of the map, and you have the periphery here for $0, which is really nice. We do start out with animal pens. Contracts are available on this map. We have many productions to start out with. Most of them are the apple trees, as you can see here. And there are no uh, collectibles. If we take a look for mods specific to this map, we take a look under the buy menu first. There's nothing here. You would notice it by the mods and DLC tab being in this area here. But under the build, uh, build menu, we take a look under buildings. Nothing under sheds, but under silos, we scroll down and scroll to the right, you will see Alpen Hill is right here. These couple of mods are mods specific to this map, and they will only be found on this specific map. Now, there's nothing under silo extensions, nothing under containers, but under tools, you can also see another Alpen Hill right here, the vehicle workshop, and nothing under farmhouses. 
If we look under the Productions tab and under Factory, scrolling to the right, you will see many different Alpen Hill mods right here. And nothing for cell points, greenhouses, orchards, or generators. Now, you will see here there are the garden plots under the greenhouses. These are not mods specific to the map. These are mods that were required for the map. Uh, nothing for orchards, nothing for generators. Under animals, we do have a couple here for cows. Uh, nothing for horses, nothing for pigs. Whoops. Uh, there we go. Nothing for horses, nothing for pigs. But for sheep, you will see a sheep barn here. Uh, also, for chickens, you will see the chicken pasture here. Uh, nothing for bees or others. We take a look under decorations. There is nothing under this tab whatsoever, but under landscaping. We take a look at the painting swatches, and we have a whole mess of different painting swatches. Nothing for trees or plants. Now, we start out way out in the middle of nowhere. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and just teleport over to the farm so we can start out there and it'd be a little bit easier to kind of make our way around. We don't have any vehicles over here. We're just kind of out in the middle of nowhere. So here we are at the farm, and now that we're at the farm, let's go ahead and take a look at our starting equipment. If we look under the buy menu, under owned items, under small tractors, we have the Lindner Lintrack 130, medium tractor is the Massey Ferguson 7S155, trailers, Welger DK115, cultivator, the Amazon Cineo 4000 Super, power harrows, the Amazon KG3001 Super, cedars, the Amazon Katea 3000 Super, sprayer, the Hardy Mega 1200 L. Under fertilizer spreaders, we have the Amazon ZATS 3200. Slurry tanks, we have the FarmTech Super Cease 800. Mowers, the Pottinger Novacat 301 AMED Pro. Whoops. Under tetters, we have the Pottinger Alpen Hit 4.4H. Windrowers, the Pottinger Top 342. Forge wagons, the Pottinger Boss Alpine 251. Under forestry equipment, the Kessler 144ND, front loaders, a Hauer XB190, and under front loader tools, the Alba Universal Bucket. And that is all of our starting equipment. Now let's go ahead and start looking around the farm. We've got a repair trigger right off the bat here. Whole bunches, bunches of apple trees, and we'll show those in just a second. Right next to me here is the pig pasture. You have room for 10 pigs here. We have feed here, water here, and we have input for straw here. Now we do have to put down a um, manure heap in order to collect the manure that would be generated from this here. And just occurred to me, there is no output for slurry here, is there? Is it collected? That just, yeah, there's says there's a place for it but I wonder if it's right here and it's just not uh, highlighted maybe huh that is uh, just something I noticed so here we have the apple trees you can go up to them and click on the manage productions and you'll see all you need is water or water and manure for a slightly increased yield and we have several of them here over here we have a fuel tank Whoops, 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 getting tangled up. More of the apple trees over here. Yes, over here we have a wardrobe trigger, sleep trigger. Let's see, over here we have our chicken barn. Let's see, we open, nope, uh, it's back here. That's where it is. Tucked away back here is the animal dialogue box. Room for 360 chickens. And our input for feed is here. And our eggs spawn here. Silo right here. Over here we have our cow barn. Jump over. Room for 80 cows. We have our output for slurry here. And here we have our feed trigger here. Oh. Looks like I can kind of get sunk into the ground right there, I just noticed. Going back out this way. Let's see, is it here? I'm trying to remember where the trigger was for the milk. There it is. Trigger for the milk right here. No, 
No, no, no, no, no. That's not, that's not it at all. This is the silo. So there's another silo that's attached to this. Sorry, I'm kind of scrambled right now. Input for the silo is here and output is right here. But where is the trigger for the, uh, for the milk? Where did that go? There it is. Ha <laughs> ha We found it. That's the trigger for it. And let's see. Manure heap right here. And that's it for this particular area. Now let's go ahead and head in this direction. Open the gates. And run down here. Over here we have a cow pasture with room for 45 cows. Water here, feed here, and milk trigger right there. Now this is an actual pasture so there's no straw input or manure to be produced. Now let's go ahead and go grab a tractor. We'll grab the Lind Lindner right here. And now if we head over in this direction, we got a couple bunker silos right here. Following this up, whoops, behind, oh dear. Getting out of control already. We have a hayloft right over here. To my right, ay ay ay. To my right is a bale storage. So you have your input here and your output there. And here we have a sheep barn. Room for 40 sheep. We have our feed goes here, water goes here, wool is produced here. And now that is everything for the starting farm. Let's go ahead and head out. And I'm going to go ahead and say this right off the bat. Be prepared to have your breath taken away. Holy smokes. This map has some stunning. And when I say stunning, I mean stunning views on it. As you can see, we're just leaving the back here and we're going up this massive hill. Just wait. Look at this. Starting to open up. Look at that. How beautiful is this? Absolutely takes your breath away. Just overlooks the town right down there. Wow, just wow. Little river leading to a pond right here. You can get water from there. We just keep following this road around. Beautiful rock formations built into the side of the hill. Again, look at that. Beautiful hillsides. Fields built right into it. This map is going to be not for beginners whatsoever. If you are a beginner looking at this map, this is most likely not going to be for you because you're going to have to make some incredibly tough decisions about the trade-off between vehicle size because this is a relatively small map and what I mean by that is there's a lot of areas that are going to be very hard to get in and out of with bigger equipment so you're going to have to be conscious of that but you're also going to have to be conscious of having equipment with enough horsepower to be able to get to and from and up and down these hills and if you don't have enough power then you're just going to be pretty much out of luck so right here We've made our way to the biogas plant. We can purchase it for $1,180,000. Inputs, a solid input there, liquid input here, and liquid output, aka digestate, here. Now, what we also need to do is take a look at purchasing the farmland here because there's a kind of a separate entity at work here. If we take a look at the map. So we started right around this area here. We teleported to the main farm about here, made our way all the way around it. We also took in the cow farm, a cow barn that was kind of out cow barn, cow pasture that's just outside of the main farm, swept up and around past the hay loft, the bale storage, and the sheep barn. Followed that 
over the gorgeous twisting switchback mountain road all the way out to here. Now, if we take a look at farmland number 103 and purchase it for $54,000, which we'll do, you'll see a couple of items pop up here. First off, over here, we have a slurry tank. A little liquid uh, slurry storage right there. And a fuel tank right over there. A couple big bunker silos that you now have access to when you own the land. And let's go ahead and head back out. Oops, need to go over here. And there we go. So we follow this out, kind of back where we came, and once we get to this little intersection right up here, we're going to want to make a left. Going right through the forest here, I'll make a left here. Now one feature that is on this map that I absolutely love is the traffic splines. The traffic splines on here, you'll see tractors and harvesters and all sorts of different kinds of equipment outside of just cars when you see them you'll see exactly what i'm talking about but they just kind of roll around they typically have very long lines of cars behind them i mean for obvious reasons they're not going the same speed as the rest oh here we go here's one right here ask and you shall receive look at that cool little noise now the one thing that i absolutely do not like about this map is all these little posts that run alongside of the road are uh they have collisions now i wanted to stop here to point something out you'll see how the tires on the tractor here are clipping through the ground there's going to need to be some updates and some tidying up in several places around this map So we follow this down here to our production point. We stop here. This is the carpentry. Purchase this for $60,000. We have inputs here, wood cell trigger there, and outputs there. Now I will say, even though this is based off of the normal kind of uh, design for the carpentry, this actually looks really sharp and makes so much sense. You have a carpentry that's dedicated to woodworking and stuff and they have wood slat sidings. That's really cool, that's a brilliant idea. And I just saw, look at that, see the tractor going by with the car in tow? How awesome is that? That is so nice. Now here, we follow this back up the hill and then a left. And you can see just how narrow it gets around here. Uh, right here is the house sale yearly sell point. Need to turn around. And now head over here. Follow this up here. And I think, yes, over here is the next point of interest. Back here is the bakery. Stop there. You can purchase this for $50,000. And we have our input and output back here. So we'll continue around. And now I believe it's back here. Yes. Follow this. Down this two track. And then follow all the way back in here to our next point of interest. Right here. Tucked away on the hillside here is the production point, the dairy. $230,000 to purchase this. 
holy smokes input here output right there and now we need to follow this back to the main road Continue to follow this around down the hill and going in this direction now head to the next point of interest but again we take a look as we're driving this beautiful forestry area and what's great about this map is that the outer periphery that uh, little mountainside there that you can't play on it's just the kind of picture in the background it really works with this map it really does a great job to blend in that kind of non-playable picture area with the playable area as well i absolutely love how this is actually like it fits and it benefits from that mountainscape in the background Again, all these little poles, the white poles with the black wrapped around them, they do have collisions on them, so be careful. You smack into one of them, it's going to stop you in an instant. Now we'll follow this over here. Continuing around this way again, you see just the beautiful landscape in the distance it is just breathtaking Now we come around this way to right here. This is the pet trade bale sales sell point and over here we have the animal dealer now you can come to this location and use this icon or the icons already established on the pens and pastures you have on the map. If you use this icon though directly and have and buy your animals from this location directly, you will notice that you will actually incur an additional fee. That fee is associated to a delivery fee. The animal dealer here is taking the animals from this location and delivering them for you to your pens and pastures located around the map. And you can see, if we look at our car, cow barn here, our adult cows will cost us $100 per adult cow. That adds up really, really quickly. In this case, if we bought all 80 cows, that's eight grand just in delivery fees. That doesn't even mention the amount of money that's gonna cost us in order to buy them. So you're basically spending an extra eight grand on top of the purchase price. It adds up pretty quick. Now you can save that money by coming to this exact location, bring in an animal trailer with you, whether it's leased or owned, it doesn't matter. Bring an animal trailer here and load into the animal trailer directly and deliver your animals to your pens and pastures yourself. It'll save you all that money and it will add up over time. So now we need to go back here and open this back gate, like so. And now we need to follow this around. Oh, nope, I made a wrong turn. There we go. Follow this around this way. tucked away over here in this kind of kind of I mean really just a picturesque little town right here it's just nestled in between this mountainscape here is it's just really cool here we have the tailor shop 100,000 to purchase inputs here wardrobe trigger here and outputs back here now this is where I came across one of the problems there are these little shop uh, cell points that are kind of strewn about on the map. I think 
that I read that there's four total. The problem is, is if we look at the map, we were here at the biogas plant after purchasing. We then followed this road around up to here. Uh, we basically came out to the carpentry and then the house sale yearly and then over to the bakery and then all the way out to the dairy went back out around up to the animal dealer and the pet trade sell point then followed this down and around to the tailor shop and now if we take a look where we're at here you can see there's no sell point associated right here but it says that it'll take something now, if I look at the map, you will see that there are these selling lodges that are listed here, but you can't actually tag them. You can't teleport to them. Nothing. So it's one of those where I don't know if these actually work, but I'm going to presume that they do because they do register as you know, areas to sell things. So you can see here uh, and under milk selling lodge, big, big, big selling lodge, very big. You know, you've got all these different selling lodges, and I believe this is one of them. I just don't know which one because you can't tag them. So, something I think that'll have to be fixed and addressed, but not quite sure. Over here is our next point of interest, going back to the map. And we take a... Mm, wait a minute, what happened here? Oh, okay. So we have to purchase the periphery to get this to show up. That just dawned on me. So go ahead and purchase the periphery, and now you get this, the garden plot manure. We come over here, zero dollars to purchase, by the way, and you get the ability to have tomatoes, lettuce, and strawberries, our base, you know, base game price uh, crops that you can produce, but you need to have seeds, manure, and water as inputs. Now, tucked away over here, we have the Sunview cell point right there. And let's go ahead and grab the tractor again. We'll turn around. Oops. Following this around over here. Over here, we have the pellets sales. And we have to follow this around back here. You can see that sell point just the distance right back there. That is the sales sale market sell point. And this is the only entrance because all the other entrances and exits are blocked off. And then around back over here, we have a gas station right there. So now we can kind of head out of town here and go to our next point of interest. And you can see all the traffic that gets tied up with the tractors and all that stuff. And there's harvesters that run around too, and they go even slower. So one of those where it's very fitting, I think, on this map. And anybody who's been out in the countryside, who's been, you know, out in rural parts of the country, will know exactly what it's like to get behind a tractor and not being able to get around them. come up a little ways now up here to my left is our next point of interest we'll follow this driveway here and to my left is our next point of interest this is the lime fertilizer salt herbicide seed production point and you can purchase this for eighty thousand dollars now I'm gonna say something I've never said in any of my map tours ever the first chance you get to have $80,000 that you can spend buy this production site and this is why so 
Stone to lime, one to one ratio. Not a huge deal, right? It, it's we've got plenty of of stone to lime production points where you can get two times, three times, four times, ten times the amount of lime that you put in with stones. That's not a big deal. But check this out: silage to solid fertilizer and digestate as a byproduct. 75,000 liters of silage in 75 liters of fer- 75,000 liters of fertilizer out. That is huge right there. That is beyond huge. And having a byproduct of digestate. Wow, wow, wow. Look at this. 75,000 liters of stones to salt. One to one ratio, but 15,000 liters of salt, 60,000 liters of water makes 75,000 liters of herbicide again you are making a product that is worth two thousand plus dollars per thousand liters from a product that's literally worth pennies like the, the, it's ridiculous the amount of upsell that you have from this particular production you can make a killing just from this production point it's ridiculous but this is also ridiculous a one-to-one ratio for seeds all you need is a little bit of fertilizer just a little bit of fertilizer. You can use wheat, barley, oats, soybeans, corn to make seeds. I mean, any one of those. And you get a little bit of, of fertilizer. You're talking one little hit from the uh, from your silage to fertilizer here. It's, it's perfect. This is an amazing production point. Inputs are here and outputs are back here. Over here, we have the spinnery. You saw the inputs and outputs on the other side, but we'll go check those out in just a second. 60,000 for the spinnery, and inputs and outputs are right here. Again, I really like that production point. The fertilizer and the herbicide are beyond worth it. Now we're going to follow this around to our next production point. We'll follow this out here. Again, I think there's going to be another update uh, needed for this particular area because these icons are absolutely massive. They, they kind of stand out. This is the dairy, 70,000 to purchase. You have your outputs here and your inputs are on the side over here. Turn back around. Oof. Stayed on that turn a little too long. Now, backtrack a little ways. See, again, you saw how the tractor there, as it goes into this driveway. Oh, come on. Let me through. See how it kind of drops through the floor right there? Just a little bit. Not a ton, but it's enough to be a little jarring. Again, it's going to be those little transition points. I think they're going to need to be adjusted in a later update. There's definitely going to be updates needing needed for this map. It's just going to ha have to happen. Now we follow this around. Coming up here to my left. And into here. Nope. Nope, 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 nope. Not where I meant to turn. Meant to follow this around first. There we go. All right. Starting on my left, we have the firewood processor for 40,000. You can purchase this and we will go ahead and purchase. And you take wood and make firewood. Straightforward, very nice. Got your inputs right here with the wood cell trigger there and outputs on the other side there. Over here, 
we have the apple juice press production point eighty thousand to purchase we'll go ahead and purchase that and you take apples and water to make apple juice outputs here inputs right there we'll hop back into the tractor and go down here a little bit to the grain mill Ninety-six thousand to purchase the grain mill. Output there, input there. And now we need to go back to where I was originally going to go. Down this driveway. And follow this right to here. Now, if we take a look at the map, we were here in town. We saw the tailor shop, the sun view, cell point, the garden plot, as well as the missing cell point here. We then backtracked and saw the pellet sales. Then we passed by the sales market and then pass by the gas station. Followed this out and around, out to here, where we saw the lime fertilizer salt, herbicide seed production, and the spinnery. Then came back out, down to the dairy, came back this way, all the way out to this area where we saw the firewood processor, the apple juice press, and the grain mill. We then backtrack down and around to here, Farmland number 104, if you purchase this for $8,412, which we will do, you will get this. This is the biomass power plant. And let's, there it is right there. Can bring straw and wood chips here and create electricity. And it will just sell for you automatically. It's set up by default. So now... Head back up the hill. I absolutely love how all these little production points, all these like little things are just kind of tucked away in these little nooks and crannies, uh, just dotted around the map in these random places. I mean, it's just absolutely stunning. I keep saying it, and I'm going to continue to say it because, again, there's several areas that are just that just take my breath away, and I'm sure I'm not going to be the only one. So now we follow this around to this area tucked around the backside over here we have our shop trigger right here and our repair trigger right here we have a gas station aka, AKA fuel tank right here hop back in come back here So this, I'm not 100% sure how to pronounce, but I'm going to try. This is the Guell Purchase uh, Buy Point. This is a buy point for slurry. Over here is the, and this is the real name, and I will go to the map after this and prove it, the Crap Purchase Buy Point. And then over here, the Agricultural Trade. Let's go ahead and prove that, just so nobody thinks that I'm just goofing around here. So we were here at the biomass power plant, came up and around, followed this through here to the shop and repair trigger, as well as the gas station. Then we came over here, the Guell purchase buy point, the crap purchase buy point, and the agricultural trade. And yes, I am giggling. I am a small child. I apologize. <laughs> Anywho. Now let's go ahead and follow this around, making a right, down this little hill, make a left, and now we follow this way out for our next point of interest. But again, you just get all these different elevations and undulations in the land. You get the fields that are just tucked away. You, you're you really not supposed to be able to get to these fields very easily. There's very specific lanes in, lanes out. Again, here's another tractor holding up traffic. 
I love that little sound effect that it has as it goes by. That pop, 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 pop. I mean, just screams old school tractor. Just screams it. And it just, oh, love it. Love it. So we just keep on following this around until we get to our next point of interest. You can see it's coming up on the map now. Again, that hillside, that kind of border of the map just really does fit very well with this map. I am very shocked because it's almost never when this border is used that I really think that it's appropriate or that it fits this one it really does fit and it's very nice now we are at the sugar mill 80,000 to purchase output there and input along the back side over there now now we climb here before we go I want to just double check something really quick because I saw something that just kind of caught my attention so if we look under productions I'm looking specifically for sugar mill okay so yeah standard sugar mill I just saw oh there's the harvester I was talking about right there how awesome is that that is spectacular and look at this we might as well be those mountain climbing goats right there. This is extremely aggressive of a climb. If you're trying to go up this hill with any kind of weight behind you, you are likely not going to make it. And like I said, this is one of those maps that, again, you're going to have to really be familiar with the game. This is not going to be a kind of beginner friendly map whatsoever this is not going to be one, something that you're going to start on as a newcomer to farming simulator oh there's mm -hmm. there that happened just decided to do a barrel roll for no reason another harvester right there Again, look at that landscape, and, and this is exactly, this view here is exactly what I'm talking about with the landscape actually playing to the outer border. I mean, it just, it actually looks like it belongs, and it's so rare that you can say that. Here's that old school tractor again. Another harvester. And now, we go up this way. Whoops. And you see, Hoff 2, this is the second farm. We're going to go back here. Following this out in this direction first. Alright, bunker silos. Off to my right. Built into the hillside. And now we make it to the farm. Let's go ahead and check it out on the map. So we were here at the uh, vehicle shop, the, yes, all this stuff. I'm not going to repeat it because I'm just, a, yep. Came up to here, out and around this whole perimeter to get up to Sugar Mill, up and around this extremely aggressive switchback road, up to here, and out and around to Farmland number 91 can be purchased for 86580 Go ahead and purchase and look at all that. We get a lot with our purchase here. So we saw the bunker silo. Uh, over to my left is the seed storage, basically a seed silo. You can purchase seeds for it and take out. Over here, we have our chicken barn. 
room for 360 chickens. We have our eggs produce right here and feed is right there. We have a manure heap right here. Over here, we have a fuel tank. In here, we have a cow barn and room for 45 cows. We have our milk trigger is here. Now, this is a mod um, that is actually very nice. So, with the exception of the milk, everything else on this is triggered and where it's or sh is signed as to what goes where. So, here, food trigger. Straw trigger is right here. And our liquid manure comes out here. Over here, we have another pig pen. Pig pasture, 10 pigs. Again, food here, water here. I'm not sure where the straw or slurry comes out. Again, I think slurry may come out here. That's just a guess. And manure comes out right there. And let's see, over here we have our silo. Let's see, make sure I got everything. In front of me here is the hayloft. You can put in and take out right in here. Over here we have our sheep pasture. Room for 40 sheep. Feed here, water here, wool there. Bunch of apple orchards, our apple trees productions. Over here we have the garden plot. Again, inputs here, outputs here. Over here we have our wardrobe trigger and sleep trigger. And back here, we have a cow pasture room for 45 cows. Water, feed, and milk. All right there. Now, I want to show something. We run back here to the very back side. You can see just how aggressive the hillside is. That house, that big, tall house, you can barely see the peak. Ugh, just... that gives you any understanding as to how aggressive the landscape is on this map. So now we'll turn back around and leave the farm. Following this back out to the road. And we'll come over here and we will see our next point of interest just down there. Now, I'm going to go ahead and walk to it instead of drive to it. This is the large sawmill production point. You can purchase this for $150,000. Our wood, out, uh, wood chip output is there. Wood input is here with a wood cell trigger right there. And our output for our... Uh, production is right there let's go ahead and get back to the tractor now over here we have two cell points one of these cell points is the, uh, I think it's supposed to be Alpes Bale Purchase cell point and the Alpes Country Trade cell point. So you've basically got two separate cell points just layered on top of each other right there. I think one's supposed to be able to accept bales and the other one just takes normal supplies. Now heading down continuing to head down in this direction. Here we're going to make a left. And then just following this two track out until we get to our destination. And I will say slow down 
coming through this bridge here. There's a couple of big bumps, and if you're ripping right through it, you could go into the drink. To my left is the restaurant cell point. And just beyond it is our next point of interest, our next production. This is the fish farm. Purchase this for 150000 Inputs here, outputs there. Now, because fish farm is not something that is normally here, I will go ahead and purchase. And you see we can put in corn, mineral feed, wheat, potatoes, and barley and get fish out. So a lot of stuff to go in in order to get the product out. So again, coming to this point, slow down. I almost went into the water because I went too fast on my initial walkthrough. Now following this back out to the main road, we are now going to be heading to farm number three. Which is basically going to be our second to last point of interest. So now, following this to the left. Again, just watching this just kind of twist and turn and cut through the landscape. Again, be very careful, be very aware of where you're driving, how you're driving, because these little posts here have collisions. If you run into them, if you deflect off of them, you could go tumbling down very, very easy into the ravines, into places that you just do not want to go down. So coming up over here is our next point of interest. Now, I believe... Let's see, I think we follow it out this way. Yes. So this is, again, one of those sell points that I think is available to use, but it doesn't show anywhere on the map. So we take a look. We're here at farm number two. Came out to the main road. We walked down to this uh, large sawmill and then came down to the Alpes sell points, the bale and the, um, oh, what was the other one called? The Alpes, where was it? Country Trade. There it is. And we came out around, out to here, up this driveway. And you can see there's no cell point here. And we do own the land. So it something should be here visible for us to find. Now you can see the farm tucked away on top of that little hill there. Like how picturesque is that right there? Following this over here. all the way into the farmyard here. Now, purchase farmland number 90 for $111,000 and 711720 Now, I don't have enough for this, so I'm going to go ahead and sell... Uh, oh, I can't sell that. That's the main farm. Can I sell this farm up here? I cannot. Um, ba -ba -ba -ba. What about that? Did that give me enough? Did not. Uh, let's sell from the, some of the... There we go. Now we've got enough. Yeah, there we go. All right. So, starting with right over here, we have our sleep trigger, wardrobe trigger. Let's see. Over here, we have a chicken pasture. Room for 80 chickens. Eggs here, feed there. Let's see. We're on the back side over here. We have a hayloft here. 
a silo right next to it. Next to it, we have a pig barn. Again, we're used to this pig barn. Room for 10 pigs. And then over in here, we have our cow barn. If we open this up, we have room for 45 cows. Feed here. Again, if you take a look for signs, feeding here. Let's see. I think we open... Nope, not this door. Uh, let's see. i got to remember where all the triggers are for this. Uh, that's, you can see manure right here. So I think that this will actually produce manure. Does this actually show? Yes, it does. So you see manure in the bottom right hand corner there. So you got to rake out all the manure that comes through here. Over here, you have your liquid manure here. You have our milk right there. Let's see. Whoops, I just... I need a change in my notes. Now I believe if we go down here. Um, no. Let me see. Let me take a look at the map just real quick. No, I was right. Okay. Yep, follow this around. There we go. Over to here. We have a cow pasture, room for 45 cows, water, feed, and milk right there. Over here, we have a bale storage tucked away here and several more of the apple trees. Now, let's see. I believe I need to backtrack over here. We need to go back to the tractor and then go on the back side of the property. There we go. Now I'll follow this out to the left. A couple bunker silos right there. To my left is the sheep barn. Room for 40 sheep. Feed here, water here, and I believe the wool... Yep, there is the wool trigger right in here. And then, tucked away back here, we have four greenhouses. Just normal greenhouses, nothing special about them. As you can see, just normal stuff. So, let's go ahead and hop back in the tractor and go find our last point of interest off the farm. Now following this all the way back out to the main road. There's that cell point that isn't marked. There we go. And now we head out to the left to get to our last point of interest. <laughs> right here is the last point of interest the last production on the map this is the pellet production the uh, production pellets 20,000 will purchase this we'll go ahead and purchase and you can see you can make pellets from trees from wood chips and from straw you have your input way over here wood cell trigger there and output is right there and that is everything that is everything that to be shown for 
Alpen Hill. Now it's time to render my opinion, let you know what I think. Zero to five scale as per usual. Well, as you can very obviously tell, I am a big, big fan of this map. Very, very much. I, I like this. This, there was another map a while back that I did a map tour, and while I was doing my map tour, I was absolutely in love with it. It was based off a real region in the world, and I had said on the uh, on the tour, basically, if I could live there, like that kind of scenery, or at, least at minimum visit there, you bet your bottom dollar I would do it. And same thing applies here. This is so gorgeous. Look at that. Just look at the the rolling hills, the mountainscape. Just absolutely beautiful. And yeah, I just absolutely love this map. Now, I will say, as a couple of negatives, the issues that I previously talked about, the clipping through the floor, the way that the map looks in its color palette it, the whole roadside all the roadside looks like a cartoon and that is about the worst thing that i can say about this entire map this oops well, okay and these posts these posts drive me nuts <laughs> having collisions on these posts uh anyways the color palette, I, I think this looks like a cartoon all around the road. I would love to see this get an update to where this was kind of toned down a little bit. Maybe a single color, maybe one or two colors would be two colors. that would be like the maximum that I think would be kind of OK visually. But this you see you get reds, pinks, blues, purples yellows whites i mean you get all sorts of wildflowers just lining all along the roadside here that it just makes it look really really cartoon like like you're going through a cartoon and it's the wild thing though for me is that would be something i would normally pick up on right away but because of the way this map is laid out the undulations the hills are so much that is going on that you really don't have the opportunity to really absorb just how much the map has that kind of cartoonish feel. So there's so much woods, there's so much trees, there's so much hills, there's so much everything going around that it really draws the eye away and makes you really kind of focus on what's directly in front of you so you don't go driving off a cliff. But if that wasn't the case like look at how steep that is holy smokes like there's areas like i said that are just really really intense that you're gonna have to like compensate for and we just saw that one right there i mean it's just it's a fantastic map it's really sharp and i really really like this now normally when i see that there's the overabundance of the colors like what we see on this map i would normally dock it pretty heavily maybe a full point maybe a point and a half you know because oftentimes it's there's not enough going on to really combat and overcompensate for the bursting of color but on this map like i was mentioning before it really does have so much going on that it's able to that you're able to almost kind of put it out of your mind or at least i'm able to so yeah i'm not going to penalize it as much as i normally would that being said what would i give this map zero to five scale as per usual i would normally if the color palette was a little bit more optimal in my opinion i think this would be a five all day and night but with it being the way it is with the uh, issues that are plaguing it with the color palette all that stuff kind of taken into account what do I think I would give this map I'd probably give this map a four with it as it in its current state if it were to be updated for fixing the issues the the falling through the floor and stuff like that then it'd get a four and a half 
So yeah, this, this is probably the least amount I've ever discounted a single map for its color palette. Um, so yeah, I, I'm I'm a I'm a big fan of this map. I think this is absolutely stunning. I think this is going to provide a ton of challenges. You look at that field right there and just how built into the hillside that is. Like that is going to be a absolute logistical nightmare to try and figure out how to get this done you know it, it's good it's nice and i like that i like that it's going to be something that's going to be a little bit more challenging to deal with you have some of these fields here that have entrances in entrances out um but there's other ones like the one i just showed over here where it has its own dedicated lane to get to it so it's nice and it's typically these ones where the hillside is very rough along the side here and the ones that don't have that are the ones that are a little bit more smooth and easy to get in and out of so yeah all in all it's really a sharp map i really like it and yeah that's how i feel about it but i hope you enjoyed this map tour if you did please show me by liking sharing subscribing following commenting doing all the things the algorithms enjoy you doing that shows your engagement with this channel and enjoying the content and that being said I hope you have a fantastic day. Take care.